Good evening and welcome to Hawaii News for You, which this week has placed a gag on me mentioning Manchester United's superb title win, and like most of the other gags tonight, it's failed completely. <laughs> in the news this week, in London, the first passenger travels on the new £3 billion Jubilee Line extension. <laughs> Several days after his disappearance, the notorious Mafia supergrass Lucky Giuliano is traced to a Sicilian factory. <laughs> and in the run-up to the Edinburgh Tattoo, the Highland Regiment rehearsed a display of traditional fighting skills. <laughs> On Paul Merton's team is a controversial art critic who once described Gateshead as a self-inflicted wound, as opposed to the sort of wounds he'll get if he ever visits Gateshead, <laughs> Brian Sewell. <laughs> and with Ian Hislop tonight is a writer and comic who's on record as saying, I like paintings with fat birds in them. <laughs> a line she obviously nicked from a Brian Sewell article, Mira Sayal. <laughs> Round one takes the form of our first round and vice versa. Ian and Mira. Oh. That's Alistair, darling. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> They're trying to push a, a, well, they have actually just mm -hmm. pushed a bill through to limit uh, disability rights. It's the first big rebellion against Tony, and therefore it's major news. Because all those backbenchers have sort of woke up after two years and they thought, we've got something to do. <laughs> <laughs> we can vote against him. <laughs> Never occurred to them before. It's no to Tony, except it's been passed anyway, because he's got so many MPs. Why did Labour choose Thursday to, uh, to have the vote? A lot of the Tories are washing their hair. <laughs> <laughs> Very nearly. It's actually the Tories going home uh, to their constituencies. To wash their hair. Not in William Hague's case. It's not going to take till. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long time to comb the three strands over just dry. So see no, he's had it done very close and butch now. Oh. Tony lets it flow to look caring. <laughs> He's looking more and more sort of Javara like, isn't he? Javara is an architect. I think you mean Guevara. <laughs> I thought if I pronounced it in a silly voice, you might wake up. <laughs> we were so bored by what you were telling us. Yes. Quite right, Brian. Yes. Mm. Politely sitting here doing nothing. This is nothing much to do. Could you move on? <laughs> Sorry to bore you, Brian. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you if you knew who had made a uh, particularly good use of their mobility allowance this week. It was some dotty old woman who went the wrong way up a motorway at 60 miles an hour in her electric chair. Yes? No? I don't know if she's a dotty old woman, but Janet Simpson was her name. <laughs> she, con she converted her chairlift to go straight out the front door and up the motorway. <laughs> 58 miles an hour. She can go from the living room to the bathroom in 2.4 seconds. <laughs> We can actually have a look at, uh, at what she did. This is her. <laughs> Very bad clutch control. <laughs> <laughs> it's a closed circuit television, Brian. Oh, I, they I thought it was a typical like woman that. driver. <laughs> Statistically, have less accidents than men, actually, Brian. That, but that's because men mm. avoid them. They know there's. <laughs> How to alienate half your audience? Um, <laughs> but I was the other half before we were finished. <laughs> <laughs> that's a proud boast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, this is the debate over the Welfare Reform Bill, uh, which has elicited the biggest backbench revolt since Labour came to power. Uh, Tony Blair missed the debate as he was in Albania, where he was greeted by students carrying placards with spontaneous slogans such as this. Uh, Prime Minister Blair, we are with your efforts to implement peace and democracy in Kosovo. Uh, that was right next to the T-shirt, which said, we also think your incapacity benefits package will result in a net gain for the genuinely disabled. <laughs> Paul and Brian, your chance to score. There's Tom Parker Bowles, um, looking for Charlie. <laughs> and there it is, there's a bit of cocaine there being chopped up very nice, and there is Charlie. There's Daddy. Right? There's Daddy. 
<laughs> I'm looking for cocaine up there. Oh, I've got something in my hand. I'll pass it to you. There we go. Um, go over here the way to the cocaine. This is where your son's over here. Good, because I want some cocaine. <laughs> it's about Tom Parker Bowles taking cocaine. Mm. He can't get enough of it. It's like a drug to him. <laughs> He's rich, he works in the world of PR, and he takes cocaine. Amazing. Mm. They'll yeah. be inbreeding next. Extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and where is he now, Tom? Where, where is he now? He's about 15 feet above Neptune, I should think. <laughs> yeah, so he's actually at the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, that's right. And uh, who exposed him? How did all this come about? News of the world. He was at a party, seen at a party, taking photographs at a party. They went to Cannes, followed him, said, we want some coke, so I can get you some. And they said, I'm oh, from News of the World. He said, oh. <laughs> And what other royal drug users have there been? In the Queen past? Victoria, she used to do it all the time. She used to take everything. Uh, cocaine, uh, marijuana, you say lot. Chloroform, mostly, she took, yeah. didn't she? During childbirth. Laudanum. Laudanum. Mm. Thank you. Yes. Do you know there's a lot of laudanum in the stock of lettuce? <laughs> if, your, if your children won't go to sleep, you'll give them the base heart of a lettuce and they gnaw on it and it's got enough laudanum and knock them out. <laughs> That's why salad is so um, successful in expensive restaurants. All going in for their little chew. <laughs> and don't get you heard it here first. <laughs> and last, I should think. Yes. <laughs> uh, after being exposed as a cocaine user, it was reported that Tom's colleagues at the PR agency are all standing by him. Fair enough, he's the one with the gear. <laughs> Uh, reprimanded for causing such embarrassment to his family, Tom Parker Bowles, according to the Sunday People, may have taken the drug to keep him awake all night. Of course, in the past, he'd been kept awake all night by the sound of his mother shagging the heir to the throne. <laughs> you didn't want a knighthood, did you? No. <laughs> Just ask. Just, uh, just as well, really. Uh, Ian and Mira, <laughs> your second test. Oh, uh, yeah. yes. This is the Home Office in their wisdom that are, are quizzing all the uh, Indians, Sri Lankans and Pakistanis who are coming in to see the World Cup to test that they're really coming here for, for genuinely watching cricket. But um, apparently the Indian government are, are, are retaliating, so from now on any English visitors going to India have to sit in a dark room and answer questions about Norman Tebbit. <laughs> Yes, what was Norman Tebbit's cricket test? Um, he claimed that um, you could tell where people's loyalty was um, by the team they supported, and he was very offended that P Indians and Pakistanis living here supported their teams from, from back home. Mm. But then he is bonkers. So yes, <laughs> there is that. I mean, he did also claim that Paul's every word was scripted on this programme, didn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you a cricket fan? It's one of those games that just seems to take forever. I mean, you know, you get really excited for the first hour and then you drop really? off. Rather like a lot of other things in that really. <laughs> Don't look at me, an hour. <laughs> Sex doesn't last all day and you don't usually have a drinks interval. <laughs> and you don't brought on by the twelfth man. <laughs> Yes, and the media enclosure at Lord's has a nickname. Have you come across this? The Singing Tortoise. <laughs> the Press Room. Uh, no, I think Paul was closer. Uh, Cherie Blair's Mouth is what... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> These are the World Cup fans from Asia uh, who have to prove their cricket knowledge to immigration officers before being allowed into Britain. Uh, if they know nothing about cricket, then they're assumed to be illegal immigrants or England test selectors. <laughs> uh, by contrast, arrivals from Australia and New Zealand are simply asked whether they have a return ticket and the name of the pub they'll be working in. <laughs> uh, and uh, finally, Paul and Brian. Right, clearly Jack Straw, the Home Secretary, walking through a nice shopping centre. That's the uh, old Bailey. That's the jury thing. There's the jury. He wants to get rid of them. Let's get rid of trial by jury, and this is... Um... Oh, yes. What a silly man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these, these, these are such innocent fun. No, I mean, what... <laughs> I 
I actually got rid of somebody by putting one of those cards in in telephone box some years ago. Um, very tiresome young man down the road who played loud music until two o'clock in the morning. So I put his telephone number in transvestite. <laughs> Does he know you did this? No, it, if he's watching, he'll know not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clamp on Tart's cards. It is. You can't ring them and then go to their place anymore. They have to come out on the streets looking for business. Mm. It's an attempt to inject a bit of work ethic into England's <laughs> prostitutes. Mm. It's a wake-up call. It says, come on, you <laughs> lazy slappers, get out! <laughs> Decent days pay for a decent days lay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't ever tried ringing them. They're, there. they're always engaged, aren't they? No, they're not. <laughs> Are they? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you ring one that says, for example, um, delicious, dark-skinned Barbadian, fresh in town. Wants to know about cricket. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe. Um, and you'll have a conversation. And it's sort of unsatisfactory in terms of bargaining power. And then you look further down the list and you see there's some delicious Scandinavian Miss Whip. And you ring her and you begin the conversation and the voice of the other one says, haven't I just been talking to you? <laughs> you so mean there's only one prostitute in London? Yes. <laughs> she must be rushed off her feet. <laughs> and I could have used a better word than rushed. <laughs> yeah, I once saw a card in a news agent's window that said, massage in the oval area. <laughs> So the other part of uh, the question, which involved uh, trial by jury, as you uh, accurately pointed out. Yes, it's been going yes. on for 800 years, and Jack Straw thinks it's uh, some people abuse the system, so he wants to try and get rid of it. It's for middling offenders. It's just, I mean, it's an attempt to save money. <coughs> middling um, offenders. Are people still turning to middling to make money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the casualties, the people who have lost mm. their lives to middling. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Straw promises that he will punish individuals severely using strict new measures, as indeed does Naughty Natalie on 0171. <laughs> uh, so at the end of that round, uh, it's about as even as Stevens get, being as it is for all. <laughs> round two this week pitches us headlong into the wit free world of tabloid headlines, one each to forgive, Paul and Brian. There is no poetry in motion. Oh, Lord. So what an unfortunate name for anybody, least of all the, um, the new poet, laureate. Isn't that it? Um, he's a dull, dull boy. Comes from East Anglia. <laughs> Everything that comes from East Anglia is pretty dull if it isn't ugly. <laughs> How about women from East Anglia? Yes. <laughs> Suffolk is known as the county of ugly women. Is it? <laughs> What's your street known as? <laughs> the street of beautiful men. <laughs> I actually went round your house last week. Which one? The one you just sold in North London. Why? A friend of mine's bought it. Is this true, Brian? Well, I have sold the house. That is perfectly true, and I've moved into another. I can't imagine that the people who bought my house from me could possibly be friends of yours. <laughs> So why was it controversial, this appointment? Because he isn't any good. <laughs> Is it blank verse he does? It's not even that. It's no, just... no, 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 it's just random lines. In, 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 no, that's uh, Tom Parker Bowles again. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know who Mo Molum's choice was? Pam <laughs> Paul McCartney. Yeah, she suggested Paul McCartney. Yeah. But Paul McCartney has just become a painter. I don't know about the kind of papers you read, but all the broadsheets were absolutely full of lurid, coloured reproductions of dreadful daubs by Paul McCartney. <laughs> Exhibited in Germany. So he shouldn't be allowed to exhibit, is that what you're saying? I think if he lived in Arabia, they'd cut his hands off. <laughs> oh, well, I don't fancy your chances too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Uh, yes, this is the appointment of Andrew Motion, uh, the new Poet Laureate. Uh, he's said to be uh, mildly irritated at his description as a safe pair of hands. A mildly irritated poet. Ooh, uh. <laughs> uh, Ian and Mira, uh, may the sales force be with you. Yeah, is it not about the Phantom Menace? The Phantom Menace being? It's a film. You may have missed it. Um, it's it coming out. Big Star Wars film. Is, is there. And there's a lot of merchandise attached to it, of course, where there always is. The main thing is the double-edged lightsaber. <laughs> you see, in the old days, you just got an ordinary one with one. <laughs> but now, you see, you're going to get a two-handed one. So you can do some stuff. I, I mean, I'm not interested in this. <laughs> Well, Ewan McGregor got very excited when he was uh, wielding his uh, sabre sword, so whatever they call them, because uh, he lightsaber, because he was actually doing his own sound effects, and they had to, they had to tell him to stop. <laughs> That's really sweet. But um, it's quite a hard part, isn't it? When you're taking on the entire universe, and yet you're just in a shed <laughs> with a blue cloth going. Whoosh. <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing. It's incredible. <laughs> See, I could have done it. The young, the young Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> you would have to change out of your Simon Templar outfit. <laughs> if you're going to make Simon Templar, I'm going to make you stand up. <laughs> just to prove I have legs. <laughs> and a uh, dress on. I think it's very chic. <laughs> I do. Oh, very Mira. chic. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I will start calling you Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how long were the fans queuing up for? Did you read about this? About a month, I think. So what's someone yes. actually in sleeping bags for a month? They've been queuing on, on the street for a month. Um, Extraordinary. Even sadder, in fact, there's a website where you can actually watch the queue. <laughs> <laughs> DeeplyTragic.com <laughs> <laughs> The much-hyped prequel has been eagerly awaited by fans and if you don't want to know how it ends, then you shouldn't have gone to see the last one. <laughs> so, uh, at the end of that uh, intergalactic chaos, uh, neither side has the goal to create a lead of any sort, both intent on sticking with six. In just a few seconds, it'll be time for the odd one out round. One question per team. Paul and Brian, Eddie Stobart, Mo Molum, Princess Anne, and Chris Eubank. Um, right, uh, Eddie Stobart, who is he? He runs a haulage company. He's, Does big, he? he's big in trucks. It is about cars, I think, because um, certainly Princess Anne was, has been done for speeding in the past. Uh, Mo Molum, has she been done for speeding? Probably can't drive, I think. <laughs> Doesn't look like a driver, does she? Not there, no, because she's not in a car. <laughs> um, HGV licences. Princess Anne, I think, has got an HGV licence. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I think that. She drives horses around. Chris Eubank, well known for having a big HGV licence. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and Mo Molum, she's got an enormous 48 ton truck. <laughs> Actually, I've no idea, but I reckon they've all got licence except Eddie Stobart, who runs big trucks but can't drive one. Is the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> right, well then, I'll have a go then. Uh, Mo <laughs> Molum hasn't got an HGV licence, all the other three have. Is the right answer. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would probably say one point each is probably the fairest way of doing Why? it. Why? Why? He got the right reason, you got the right person. You said driving after I told you who Eddie Stobart is. Well, how did you know who Eddie Stobart is? Everybody knows. The truckers are having a campaign. They're sitting on the M25. All right, let's have a straw poll. Anybody here, put your hand up if you know who Eddie Stobart is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> one person. I bet we didn't... <laughs> Yes, he is a freight magnate who... He's a uh, what? A freight magnate. Well, he's stuck to the fridge. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chris Eubank, as you mentioned, does have uh, an enormous track uh, with a registration 1KO. Because <laughs> you might be able to I spot. I think it's I KO, don't you? Really? I knock out. Not one knock. Oh, well, you actually might say one knock. Sir, <laughs> <laughs> I think when you see 
<laughs> when, you, when you see Chris in Eubank interviewed after a fight, he says, well, one knocked one's opponent. <laughs> Mm. It's the only sensible thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to hit me, so I hit him back. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you meet him at the Brits? Is that right? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. Mm. I was actually dressed as a hideous character, for goodness gracious me, at the time, which he found rather attractive. I don't know why. Like the truck. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really, Brian. Uh, Do you have a lot of friends, Brian? <laughs> In spite of having an HGV licence, Princess Anne recently took delivery of a Reliant Robin. According to the Sunday Telegraph, it came with top specification trimmings. That's a steering wheel and windows. <laughs> Uh, last Tuesday, <laughs> lorry drivers converged on London in further protest at uh, high diesel prices. And the organisers of the blockades had hoped for more truckers to turn up, but at the last moment, several pulled out without any indication. <laughs> uh, Ian and Mira, your assorted fruits are uh, Pam Ayres, Jonathan Aitkin, Dominic Lawson and a Furby. <laughs> I think this is a spy question. Um, I think this is MI6, because Pam Ayres once admitted or was outed as a, an agent of MI6. Pam Ayres? Pam Ayres. God, I bet that was riveting. <laughs> Emergency! Come here, quick! <laughs> <laughs> the cat next door has just been sick! <laughs> <laughs> So she worked for MI6. Um, Jonathan Aitken claimed he worked for MI6 in order to try and get off the charge that he was a liar and a bit of a crook. And uh, Dominic Lawson, um, uh, they claimed that he was a spy. Mohammed Al-Fayed is completely um, obsessed by getting his revenge on the establishment, and he thinks Dominic Lawson um, is a spy. Um, the Furby was, was fingered as a spy in America. Um, they got terribly worried because the Furby listens to what you say and then parrots it back. And a lot of big Pentagon officials bought them for their kids, <laughs> took them home, made a few phone calls, let's bomb Iran, or whatever they were saying, and the Furby the next day said, yeah, let's bomb Iran. <laughs> Which is a pretty major security risk. I don't know how they did that, because our Furby never worked at all. We had to put a cushion over ours. We did, well, kept talking throughout the night. It was frightening. I think that would work on Brian. Yeah. <laughs> you can try. Has anyone placed a cushion over you in the middle of the night, Brian? <laughs> Take that as a yes. yes okay. <laughs> Even a Fergie, I mean a Furby. <laughs> well, that was a Freudian slip. That's a terrible slip. I've got a, mm. I've got a Fergie at home saying, pay me, pay me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm it's... saying Pam Ayres is the odd one out. They were all accused of being spies, um, except Pam Ayres, who actually admitted being a spy. Is the right answer. Oh, very good. <laughs> Business expert Dr Nigel Morgan explained the phenomenal profits from Furby sales. If uh, people can't get hold of a particular toy, it gets into the media and the whole thing is self-perpetuating. Which reminds me, stocks are running low of the new Buzz Merton and My Little Hislop toys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to the Shirley doll hit the shop. <laughs> which... Uh, Close examination uh, shows that at the end of this oral, uh, Paul and Brian have failed to make the grade. Behind as they are, 9-7. Mm. And so to the welcome surprise of two British teams actually reaching the last round of anything, <laughs> as we show them a selection of partially obliterated headlines, including some or more from this week's guest publication, the quite excellent Eddie Stobart Fan Club News. <laughs> so prepare yourselves for... Women have more what? Grey matter. They've got more... They're, 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 although their brains are smaller, they are, their brains are brainier brains than men's brains. <laughs> Women have more reasons to run over Brian Sewell if they see him in the street? <laughs> 
<laughs> Obviously true, but not the gray right matter, answer. Isn't it? Intelligence. Gray it matter. is grey matter. Yes. Well done. According to American researcher Professor Eve Burrows, uh, women have more brain cells, are generally cleverer, and on the whole, more intelligent. Mm. Sorry, so. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and they're pretty little darlings as well, aren't they? <laughs> Next, uh, Pinocchio knew the truth. What? Your nose gets longer when you tell lies. <laughs> Is the right answer. Your yep. nose gets longer when you lie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, according to scientists at University of Illinois. That's uh, right. Other... There's erectile tissue in there that fills with blood. It does. And the other time when it fills with blood? When somebody hits you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is when you're aroused that your nose... So how do they know if Clinton is aroused or lying? <laughs> Most men do both at the same time, actually. <laughs> uh, other indicators of dishonesty are uh, leaning forward, averting the gaze, and speech errors. Errors. Sorry. <laughs> uh, next, my wife is what mad? Uh, barking. Trucking. Trucking. Uh, Eddie Stobart mad. Is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, this is uh, Dennis Barber's wife, uh, who's so Eddie mad that uh, she's had a truck named after her. Uh, it was a great thrill, said Mrs. Twelve Cylinder Juggernaut. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, what is Fergie's <clears throat> latest problem? Incontinence. <laughs> it's a reference to uh, Manchester United, isn't it? Evidently. Uh, no, oh, yeah. yes, yes, of course. Oh, I mean. <laughs> Forgotten you <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, in fact, what is Fergie's latest problem? Uh, but it is a reference to uh, Roy Keane, who got into trouble after helping Man United to the treble and himself to several trebles, <laughs> which uh, wayward predictions uh, bring us uh, storming to the end of tonight's bulletin and mean that uh, this week's absolute showers are Ian and Mira with 11, while this week's sunny dispositions are Paul and Brian with 13. Uh. But uh, before we give them leave to take theirs, the brief but weekly matter of our caption competition. <laughs> Look at that ugly, poisonous <laughs> creature. <laughs> Spider saying, apparently they eat their husbands, don't they? <laughs> eat it, you mad bat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I leave you with news that in Bolivia, a naive tourist unwittingly tries his first crack cocaine. <laughs> In Edinburgh, officials deny the opening of the Scottish Parliament was affected by a clash with the Rangers-Celtic match. <laughs> and at a relaxed press conference in London, the inventor of genetically modified foods tells the public to stop worrying. <laughs> Good night. Stay with us for a bit of wife swapping for Rav next on BBC Two, and then Mira Sayal returns in Goodness Gracious Me at 10.